back for the Battle of the South. I am Will Althazar Brooks. Joining me once again is Johnny Arrested Pi Lewis, and we are here to get into the next game. On the blue side is going to be Reading Book Club, and they are against our glorious Titanic on the red side. I shall give them the go. Go button activated. And let's hope we get it into uh, a little bit quicker than we did last time. Uh, so let's go, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope so indeed. The go button is active, it has not been pressed. Um and oh, well. go. <laughs> and I think someone went activate. to the toilet. Okay, someone just so went AFK. Oh. Ten out of ten. <laughs> The best you, timing. I ever. was I was I was <laughs> going to wait until the end of the song. By the way, since I'm actually I'm obliged to uh, to do this, the music that is on the stream is by Miracle of Sound. That's Miracle of Sound. He's got a YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Sound, So check him out. He is a pretty top guy. He looks like Irish Jesus. <laughs> and there's the go wow. button. <laughs> Glorious. Dude, so we do see. Um... Reading having the first man here, and I have actually no idea what uh, they'd be looking to ban because I have no idea of any of the Our Glorious Titanic players and what they play. But we do see the fairly standard Azir ban coming out, followed by a Cassadin ban, Our Glorious Titanic. No, Galio ban? Hang on, what? <laughs> um, is, th is that a misclick, or does someone on Reading I... actually play Galio? I do not believe anyone does, though I may be wrong. Um, Frozen Dawn does play a lot of champions and is fairly proficient at most of them. Um, I haven't seen Galio before. Maybe they fear the Galio Callista combo. Maybe that's what it is. I would just ban Callista then. I mean, yeah. Who but... who, who picks Galio? Uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> no. We I... do see the Jarvan ban coming out as well, though. So, fairly standard and Aurelia ban. Ah. Well, there's going to be a very sad Cooper. <laughs> does he play... A... Does, is he... Is he... He's, he's a good Aurelia. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. If, if, if you hadn't worked out yet, folks, uh, Pi does go to Reading University, so he is totally not biased. No, not biased. Completely, completely neutral. Um, impartial. Best team, impartial, neutral, same thing. Best team, Wasn't which is Reading, will obviously win this game. Um, <laughs> we see an Olaf coming out as Ooh. the first pick. I like that. It's, uh, so do I. It's um, not a particularly... It's, I was going to say it's quite daring, but it, it, I suppose it isn't. I mean, Olaf, good sustain in lane, trades fairly well with most things, though does struggle against those kind of really, really annoying full range champions. But, Rek'Sai came through the bands, and it looks like Cresters wants to lock that in. Thresh, of course, already been locked by Elbani for the support role. Yeah, they, um, they are picking up that Thresh, and probably will pick up the Rek'Sai. Even after the couple of nerfs that she's had for the last couple of patches, she's still very strong, and, uh, be looking to see how much of an impact uh, Cresters, if he actually plays this Rek'Sai, and he does. makes. Um, that is in if he is jungling, I would assume so. But uh, I would, yeah, well, we'll see how much of an impact they make with this Rek'Sai. The Leona lock, though. Instant Leona, this could set up for the Leona Graves, which, as far as I'm aware, is still one of the strongest bot lane, or one of the strongest aggressive bot lane combos I can think of. Then again, Leona Corky is also very strong as well. Leona and Callista. Leona Callista is very strong as that, too. Yeah. So, this is going to be a very fun game. We do see, um, we do see Callista played with uh, a variation of supports. Actually, she works really well with the kind of long range support. So, like the Annie from the W buff uh, that Callista got, she has a longer amount of time to proc the W mark. I can't remember what it's called now because I'm rend. bad. Re uh, no, it's not Rend. The passive. 
that if uh, you and your soulbound auto attack the same champion, ah, right. the second auto attack does 12% max health as magic damage. You combine that with an Annie, with the long range on an Annie and the spell thief's edge, mm. that's a lot of poke coming out from that lane, along with the all in potential from that Tibbers and the stuns that Annie brings to a trade. Liking Subtle's pickup of Caitlyn though. This this is a good. An, I wouldn't say it's a counter, but it's saying, I respect your combo. I am going to sit miles back and just sit and shoot you from there instead. Because. Yeah. It, it's a, I don't want to be anywhere near you. Please stay away from me and eat my cupcakes kind of a. Kind yes. Of pick. In fact, that, um, that is literal. That is exactly it. And. Yes. We're going to see a Zed. That's actually a Zed that's been locked blind. So. We might see some counter come out. There are. Not a massive amount of counters for Zed, I guess, but well, that's that would be a thing. That would be a thing. That would I'm certainly be a thing. To the um, to infused right now with their Malzahar. Um, Where's the victor? When pick yeah, the victor? There damn is it. no victor. <laughs> Where is the victor? I don't think they'd be I able to outdo like... Rifty's victor anyway. No, Rifty is very good at victor. Mm. The Poppy is being hovered though, and oh, that's not. Is it going to go? Through? I don't know. I, if I remember right, I have seen a fair amount of Poppy played, but Scion. Uh, we both love Scion. I'm pretty sure we are I, both. Yes. Scion Minion is... bowling in lane is one of the most fun <laughs> things in and top it lane. Also, really, really hurts. Yes. You max your E in lane. And why wouldn't you? It does so much damage. Um, I've been playing him a fair amount on solo queue actually, and he's really strong. Like Scion is one of the best top laners because he has so much innate damage and you don't even have to build damage if you get a sunfire and like potentially even a thorn nail as well against this team that is very heavily invested in ad uh that could work out very well for uh for this scion head tilt Kenan... sideways slightly haven't seen Kenan yeah. in a long time very long Neither time in I. fact and that is a very interesting pickup because there, there's a distinct lack of kind of all in team fight presence here for uh, for our glorious Titanic. Well, Rexai can team fight. Caitlyn can, but she doesn't bring much kind of AOE type damage. Zed, obviously, you want to be split pushing and one v oneing, but um, and Thresh is going to be useful like in any situation just because Thresh. But I feel like yep. they lose against the Oriana, Scion, and Callista, like with the Leona combo. I yeah, I would have to agree. I don't think personally the Kennen would be what I would go for. I would go for something that enhances your team, not necessarily fills something that was potentially missing. Because team fighting is all that uh, that Kennen I would say is really really good at. I mean, the slicing maelstrom is what makes his kit. Yeah. And I feel like the, the our glorious Titanic don't have the right team comp to back it up. If they had something like they had picked up the Oriana for mid lane instead, or if they had picked up a more team fight centric AD like a Graves uh, that can bring a lot of AOE damage, or even a Corky that just has a lot of poke that can be followed up by this slicing maelstrom from the cannon, that that could work a lot better. I also don't know how much a Kennen can do in lane against a Scion. Well, he can poke for sure, but the thing is, I'm pretty sure that uh, the Roar of the Slayer is going to be doing a good deal more damage than even a Razor Shuriken. The, yeah, the, the damage from that ability cannot be understated. I mean, it was it was you that told me about about Scion anyway, but like magic was uh, not magic pen on red. And you're just sitting there throwing them on cooldown pretty much. It's so effective that I have no trouble forcing a Nasus off the farm. Literally. Yeah. It's at level five. I'm doing so much damage with Roar of the Slayer that Nasus can come in and queue and he'll be down about 150 health on when he walked in. Yeah. And, and then I and then the slow and the armor shred means that I can get at least, a, generally speaking, about a free auto, a, a free auto in there as well. If I want to, I can always uh, lob out the Decimating Smash 2. There's the Soul Furnace. The all-in potential from Scion is insane as well. Talk about team fight. I'm going to sprint into your entire team and stun three of you. You are all dead now. 
Yeah, and that is a pretty scary thing coming out, and that's global raw when Scion uses that ultimate is actually just going to be quite scary, even if he does use it just in lane or to get back into lane. Conversely, on the um, Rek'Sai, though, because you, ha you have yeah. the global scream yeah, when Rek'Sai true. uses Void Rush. So there are the, there's the, there's the, there are the um, counteracting psychological elements, but Guy on battle cry as he sprints towards the enemy team, but the enemy team don't know which of them. But opposite on the opposite side, there's got to be at least a... a, a considerable dose of fear about that Void Rush, because if um, Rek'Sai is able to put a lot of tunnels down, then she can effectively get wherever the hell on the map she wants in a very short period of time. And the cooldown for, for a global ultimate, it's got a fairly short cooldown. Yeah, and it is, like, as um, we do see it often used just to get back early on at least, to get back into the jungle to get a little bit more of an XP and gold advantage, but uh, it does apply a lot of pressure. There's going to be a lot of... A lot of this game is going to revolve around how well Cresters can set up his network of tunnels on this Rek'Sai, and how much of an impact he can have across the map. We, did, we do see this as a jungle Olaf coming in, as has been played by Fnatic a hell of a lot and works really well. Uh, Olaf having so much sustain with the uh, vicious strikes and the lifesteal that he gets from that, that he's just going to be a bit of a monster when he decides to walk out of the jungle, along with the fairly strong laners that they've picked in the uh, Callista Leona lane. That's a very strong lane. The Oriana is a very strong laner, if not aggressive laner. Like, she can hold her own in pretty much every lane. And uh, Scion, as we've spent a fair amount of time talking about, is also a very strong laner in himself. So Murren on this Olaf doesn't actually have to be everywhere. He can just farm up for a fair amount and uh, kind of play reactionarily to how well Cresters uses this uh, Rek'Sai pick and how well he can pressure the map. Well, early game as well, Rek'Sai is quite squishy. So... If he were of such a mind to want to go really aggressive early on, then he could choose to do that. And of course, the Reckless Swing does so much damage. It is a world of hurt early game. Were, were you watching the um, Black Spear animation? No, actually, I was. Uh, I was. Oh, right. I was too busy okay. rearranging the the unit frames. Okay. <laughs> have you have you only had the re revelation that it kills the champion? No, no, no. It um, so Callista was actually dragging a dead Leona along with her, hence why Leona is sat up this far rather than like ten seconds behind. Though we see Subtle walking into the bush, Ooh. the axe is going to miss, and they're not going to be able to pick up the ward. It's kind of unfortunate, but uh, that's definitely better than face checking a bush for Subtle there. <laughs> yep, not going to be that blatant this early in the game. Once again, standard line of scrimmage going to be set up. Junglers starting. Oh wait, hang on. Never mind. It looks Rek like Rek'Sai's Rek actually going to start red. Yes. So, so that signifies a blue invade. I would say that that should be a blue invade. If he if uh, Rek'Sai starts at the red instead of the Krugs, then probably yes. But with the collapse potential from the Scion, because Scion's going to be pushing lane, uh, we do see that Minions Cooper picked up Soul Furnace first. So that's an interesting pickup, um, but is going to be able to start stacking that bonus health early on, as well as getting a lot of AOE damage and be able to push the lane uh, like very hard early on. So I don't know how well this invade is going to work if Rastas does decide to go towards this blue buff. We shall see. It does look like Rek'Sai is actually going to uh, start at the Krugs. So both are starting Krugs, and Copa is actually going to start at the... Raptors. Wait, what? Yeah, he's gonna, so he's gonna use his passive to kill the raptors, get level 2, and then he'll teleport back up to top lane, and he will be level 2 and won't miss much CS. So that's actually a fairly decent strategy that Scion can use. You see the TP coming out, and he is coming into lane level 2 with his Roar of the Slayer and the Soul Furnace. And um, that's going to be a fairly scared fungicide. Hang on a second. What? What? 
My brain hurts. <laughs> what did Kobe just do? He killed himself on. He killed himself on the Raptors. Yes. And just to get, he killed himself on the Raptors to get level two to go ham in lane cool sooner. Yes. How do people come up with things like that? <laughs> oh, Crestus is going incredibly low. Oh, only just about survives taking the Raptor camp. There and did you see? And Fungicide, as we were saying, Fungicide is just being poked. Roar of the Slayer it just kind of just hurts. It hurts yeah. a hell of a lot. And on cooldown, Cooper is going to be throwing minion after minion in his direction, pretty much. Whenever he can pretty much guarantee that that Roar is going to land, then, well, rightly so, he will throw it in, in the direction of the cannon. Just keep on pushing because of course Kennen doesn't have any inherent sustain. Yes, he started Doran's Blade, but that's three percent life steal. That's not going to be sustaining someone for any real amount of time. Yeah, and I think we'll probably see him well, I guess it's kind of standard for a Kennen to rush a Zonyas, but I don't know if he realizes that Raw the Slayer is actually magic damage. Most of Scion's early lane damage is magic, and a lot of people start itemizing armor but, and then still end up getting really hurt by it, but uh, we'll have to see how this matchup goes. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of people who know how to play Scion all, will always spec into um, Magic Pen in their runes, because that just further enhances that early game aggression Umaran that comes from it. catching out Crasters in his own jungle, he's going to flash for the axe and uh, misses the last undertow. Rek'Sai is going to recall in that bottom bush. Frozen Dawn and Marin are there to try and find him. The axe lands, or well, doesn't land, but gives vision. Another Undertow comes out. The Flash Force from Casters, and he's going to execute and deny the extra buff onto Marin there. A little bit unfortunate, but uh, that was fairly well played there by Casters after he realized he wasn't going to get out. Yet, yeah, smart enough. No first blood picked up just yet. Viral and Despite cute actually taking, <laughs> yeah, viral and cute, actually in a somewhat of a losing matchup because of that increased range on a Caitlyn. Viral, of course, on Callista, not the strongest of early game carries. Regardless of that, I mean, Callista is just kind of builds a load of attack speed and gets massive late game. She is, yeah. basically, she's basically another hyper carry. She's just probably the most individual hyper carry that that I think exists right now. Yeah, one thing to bear in mind though as well, Leona can't engage that well pre-6. So in the Leona Thresh matchup, Thresh absolutely dominates Leona until level 6. So oh, the, the digression Cyanol coming out in the top lane, the flash away from Fungicide. <laughs> that unstoppable onslaught forcing the flash there, and we see how much damage like the poke has just been doing. Indeed it has, and Fungicide's going to have to back out. Burn his teleport to get back into lane. Crestus is coming up towards this top lane, but the number should be held by Cobra. He's had a vision ward down for a good long period of time. Gonna just step back, return to base. He is rather low on mana since he has burnt through all of the stacks of his crystalline flask, so he returns to base. He's got 50 CS, so he's gonna wait a little while for a glacial shroud, so might be looking for a really early Frozen Heart, or maybe want to go for the Iceborne Gauntlet. Frozen Dawn's going to be taken down by the damage from the death. No, never mind. <laughs> Barrier just about enough to keep that, him up. That, that's a shield um, from the towers as well is going to help him out. But the barrier coming in pretty big there, denying the first blood. A very aggressive game so far, but nothing has come out of it for either team. Um, we see Murren pushing up this mid lane to try and deny this uh, force so door any, uh, any more of that creeps. Does go to Cresters on this Rek'Sai though, and he's going to be thankful for the wave of free XP and gold. Yeah, Cresters is going to hit level 6 pretty soon. Murren already has, but uh, Murren hasn't been actively ganking. Speaking of actively ganking, here's the Olaf, and here's the aggression all going straight onto Elbani. Gonna get aggression still coming through. 
One more attack will be enough to finish it off. There's the first blood with the Reckless Wing, but here comes the teleport. In comes Fungicide. Fungicide has hit level 6. Murren is going to fall from this one. Double kill picked up by Subtle. Cobra's going to have to fall away. Both teleports were used towards this bottom lane. Crest is trying to get the catch in towards Viral, but is unable to do so. Cobra's going to put a bit more damage down, but it is going to end up a 2 for 1 in favour of our glorious Titanic. Yeah, it's a nice uh, teleport. Oh, wow, that minion boss. bowling. I, uh, is doing so much damage to a level six Caitlyn. Cooper might actually catch him out on that rush, but he's not going to check it. And Sutton is going to be able to pick up. But they are trying to turn this round, and this is going to be scary. They actually. are going to take him as well. There's the kill. Yeah. He's not going to be able to get a catch here. They're, they're no. Going to be unable. Crest is even using a tunnel just to uh, ensure that doesn't happen. Frozen Dawn versus Force Door in the middle lane once again. The advantage is definitely held by Zed, of course. Managed to force the barrier quite quickly. Murren just picking up his red buff after falling in that in that engagement. They did go incredibly aggressive for those kills. And they did get first blood. First blood did go onto Murren. He has got that chilling smite. I do wonder what he's actually going to um, choose to go for for the for his enchantment though, because he could go warrior for big, for uh, for heavy damage, or he could try and go for juggernaut and just be there. And rely on the true damage from those reckless swings, yeah. Hmm. I feel like with his current build, he's gone for the double longsword, I feel like he's going to go for the warrior enchantment to get the brutalizer, the extra damage on that undertow, as well as the CDR if it does indeed not pick up one of his axes. Um, so. We do see Frozen Dawn getting one of these blue buffs that uh, is going to help him out a fair amount. And we did see Force Door's Flash being burnt uh, from that little bit of a skirmish earlier on. Um, so there's a bit of, bit of pressure around there as we just see a huge amount of pressure being put on this bottom lane of Redding by Subtle and Eblani. Yep, Albani going to try and be very, very aggressive. Both of them have hit level 6. Cute and Viral are just waiting for that level 6 point themselves. Viral's hit the 6 now. Not sure how long it'll be until Cute hits it as well. Still not level 6, so as soon as... As soon as... As soon as it does, then we might see an engagement come out. But Cute has taken quite a lot of damage. He might not want to. And I don't think they will hit He's sitting on a PF and the pickaxe against just the Vamp Scepter. There's no way they could win a straight up 2v2 uh, in this lane at the moment. Yeah, the double kill that was picked up by Subtle in that uh, in that rather protracted crazy engagement. Forcedor versus Frozen Dawn though in the middle lane. Forcedor going full aggressive and then jumping straight back out. The trade more than convincingly won by Frozen Dawn though. He is starting to pick up a lot of armor going towards a first item Zonyas. That's a lot of respect right there coming through, and that's really going to hurt uh, Frozen Dawn's mana. Yeah, they really don't want to be picked up by the Zed there. We do see a very sneaky dragon coming through, though. That has not been spotted out. Not been spotted out at all. Yeah. That's always sniffing around, but Cute is zoning him out. And that is a free dragon going across to Redding. And that is uh, a very nice play there, forcing Forcedor out of the mid lane. Even Cooper roamed down to mid, leaving Fungicide in the top lane to get a little bit of free farm back. He is almost 30 CS down, though, which uh, hurts him quite a lot. The, the um, early pressure there from Scion really showing. Um, so, who, that dragon pickup is very nice to see, though. We see Presters sniffing around this bot side jungle who might find himself a Marin. It looks like Cresters and Marin will at least be aware of the other's presence. Cresters looks like going to be the one trying to make a move. Marin is on about half health. Murren is also going to make it back towards the turret. Begin his recall. This is the sort of point in the game where wards inside jungles are going to become incredibly important. I mean, of course, Rek'Sai has tunnels that she can use inside her own jungle and set up in the opposing one. But for Murren... Really good vision. No, so. the, the, thing for, the thing for Murren is, if those tunnels aren't cleared with good vision, 
then Crestus is going to be incredibly difficult to deal with because you can just go tunnel to tunnel to tunnel to tunnel. Of course, you can't go down the same tunnel twice in a uh, in a considerable period of time, but it's still going to be very, very difficult. Speaking of which, the first turret of the game does go down and be picked up by Subtle and Elbani in that bottom lane. The aggressive power, not, not necessarily, the, I'm not even going to say the aggressive power, but the pushing power at the very least of a Caitlyn cannot be understated. And when you put a, ch uh, put a support with her that is so good at making sure the enemy lane cannot get onto the carry, something that Thresh does incredibly well, then, I mean, there's not a great deal that Viral and Cute can do. I mean, yeah, they, the Leona they combo is nice. But Callista just doesn't get strong until later. Yeah, and they are 30 CS down in that lane, which is a fair amount though. It's going to be required with the top tower. The objective control across the map is very strong, even though they had a losing bot lane, they snuck that dragon. Um, our glorious Titanic are looking to pressure this mid lane tower, but I don't feel like they're going to get anything out of it. Prestas has seen Murren walking into his jungle. Murren could be in trouble here. Yeah, there's the potential catch, a lot of damage going down, there's the flash follow-up as well. Cute's just going to clear out a couple of wards in the meantime. Nice and peaceful, Frozen Dawn really, really helping out his top laner. Murren's going to have to hide under turret for the time being. We do see the Void Pulses coming out from the Rek'Sai. Looks like it might try and head towards Steel. Oh! <laughs> Invincible! Oh, but there's the catch. There's the unstoppable onslaught as well. Crest is in a lot of trouble. World of hurt. Murren picks up the kill with the reckless swing. Dragon's still not up for over two minutes though, so they can't really pick anything massive up of this. Looks like four they, members are going to push the mid lane. Yeah, they will be able to get a fair amount of damage on this mid lane tower. We do see Viral having moved up. Subtle has just been left to free farm. He is going to head up as well, but it looks like an invade on this blue buff is going to be the order of the day. There is no vision for it on it for our glorious Titanic, and that is going to be a blue buff coming out from the pick on Kirsten's rest side. They may even. Oh, they might actually be able to catch here. Subtle. Murren is on yeah. Subtle right now. Oh, there's the Void Rush coming out. Murren might have to fall back from this. There's Crestus. Crestus has come in, but he's in a 4v2 situation. Murren does get taken down by Subtle, and Cute just got to try and get the catch. Cute does get caught by the uh, by the Yordle Snap Trap, though. Takes a lot of damage for his trouble. Takes it on the shield, though, and walks back away. Going to have to return to the turret. One for one, both junglers fall. Cute stepped on another trap there, which could have cost him his life or Cooper's. But we do see Zed using the shadow in, so they are about to face check a Scion, and that is going to end well for them as uh, Cooper is caught out in no man's land. He is forced to run away. The fight gets him. He is so tanky, so lovely. Good block from Cute. Hole, but that is not going to kill him. That was a lot burnt. That was an ignite from Force of Europe, the ultimate from Subtle as well. Um, just to try and get this extremely tanky Scion, but they didn't manage to pick anything up. He rushed a Forge of... He's, ru he's rushed a uh, Frozen Heart. Frozen Heart. And he's going towards, I would say, probably a Banshee's Veil. I mean, the lo the health regen, or th there's no particular reason, I would say, for a Spirit Visage just yet. He doesn't have much inbuilt sustain. I feel like he may just need a bit of Spectre's Cow for now, because Kennen isn't doing all that much damage yet. And it's... These Whoa, Murren going very, very aggressive. Albani in a world of hurt. Gets taken down instantaneously. Copa looking for the catch. Hits the unstoppable charge, and there's Fungicide taking a lot of damage. Crestus comes in to try and assist, but won't do a massive amount. Crestus still... What's the minion bowling? Oh, he's uh, not going to aim for Fungicide. <laughs> yeah, is hiding underground for the time being. Forcedor being left above to attempt the defense. He'll do fairly well. Viral versus Subtle right now. Viral does not want to fight. Understandably so, of course. The Infinity Edge has been finished by Subtle. Dragon has literally just spawned. And Murren is in the top half of the map. If he uh, doesn't get down quite quickly, then we might see... Potentially engagement, Subtle going 
very, very, very low. He's going to get taken down by the crit from Viral. Many people going in on towards Kofi, but he's so very, very tanky. Frozen Dawn is the one that's in a lot of trouble, though. Hits the Zhonya's, completed that quite recently. A lot of damage going down. Flash is coming through. Cresters and Forcedor having to burn a lot to get that kill. Fungus get taken down by Murren. Elbani is in a lot of trouble, too. Doesn't quite land with the... Uh, the... Blade. That one. Crest is in a lot of trouble. Two. Copa's going to try and go for the catch. Goes over the wall with the with the tunnel. Murren picks up the kill as well. Cresters will escape after going over the wall. Four members are currently in the mid lane. And they might be able to take a second dragon even after going for this turret because Crestus is going to take quite a while to recover. Yeah, they're going to push down this first tower. I don't think they can compete against the wave clear coming up from this fairly fed Caitlyn. Yeah, so just they're dragon. just going to head down to dragon, and that is going to be the second dragon picked up. The extra tower damage, and that is going to be extremely helpful for them. Um, our glorious Titanic can't contest this. Kennen does have teleport, but has headed to this top lane. There is a ward though, so our glorious Titanic will have the exact time around. Crest has tried to go for it. He is... Whoa. I was about to say he is caught as the uh, as the decimating smash came out, but tunnels just at the right time to evade that damage, and they're going to rotate towards the bottom lane. I think they were wanting to try and push on towards that outer turret there, but were not able to do so. No, they're just going to be happy with the advantages they've got, oh, and not overstay, and they are fine to all the cool now as they don't even have that bottom tower to lose anymore. Though Cooper is going to get caught out by the Caitlyn auto attack. The hook lands from Albani, the Murren and Viral are there. They're putting a lot of damage back and forth. The AOE on Sire really hurts. The, the teleport coming out from Kennen. And uh, just as the rest of the team back out, though, Viral has been caught out a little bit. The slice of mouse that comes down from Kennen, but he is just going to go in there with the Zenith Blade and sacrifice himself to get the rest of the team. Oh, the charge was actually used away from the fight away. there. But the stun from Spongicide is going to lock them up and they are going to pick up two kills on the return there for a little bit of um, little bit of uh, overconfidence there from Cooper sticking around and recalling when he could have just walked back a little bit further and been safe. They are going to lose the tower for that. Yep, this inner turret is going to go down. That evens up the turret score and pretty much evens up the gold score as well. There's only a 300 gold deficit on the side of forgotten their name. I'm so good at this. Our Re glorious Reading, Titanic. Reading Book Club are up by 300 <laughs> gold. There we go. Yes. Our, glorious, our Titanic glorious Titanic are down 300 gold. There we go. It's been a long they week, are. folks. It's been a long <laughs> week. It's also been a little while. Um, I know I haven't cast in a fair amount of time working the kinks out as much as anything. Hmm, indeed. Um, you see Cooper going for that second gut or that giant spell now to really. This should be a sunfire. Or a random maybe. I feel like he's going to go for sunfire because he's already got the randwins on Murren. Um, Murren. Yeah, Murren's and got it on his own. Yeah, and Cooper's just going to be standing in the middle of a team fight doing loads of sunfire damage if he's just allowed to stand there, which he's going to be because he's really tanky and they're not going to be able to focus him. Well, they shouldn't be focusing him, because if they do, it's a one team fight. But say they'll be able to. Whether they <laughs> want to is another thing entirely. Yes. Um, Kennen is going up to this top lane. Fungicide is heading there. He doesn't have TP available. Viral is bot, though. Unstoppable Onslaught is available. Yeah, as you said, Viral is bot. Though I feel like a 3v3 or a 4v3, though, is going to be won out by Redding here. As we do see Subtle heading to answer in the spot lane as Murren lands the axe on Elbani. Yeah. Forces Trade going back and forth. Yeah, the, the blade dropped down from Fusador. Viral's actually got a level advantage over Subtle right now, but does not have an item advantage. Picked up the Bloodthirster first, which is something you generally do not see as the camera veers wildly off to the south, but. Uh, the summoner controlling it was brought back under control very quickly. Just had a minor psychotic episode. And we can return to the game. There's the engaged Subtle being caught under his, inner, his outer turret. 
and instantly the takedown comes through. Cutes caught a little bit out of position, but that's instantly turned around onto Elbani. That's a double kill onto Viral. Viral's still going aggressive. Cute goes forwards. Everyone is going to have to flee away from this. Crest is taking a lot of damage. Fungicide taking equal, if not greater amount. The push is going to continue on towards this inner turret as well. Viral just going to lay the auto attacks into the turret. If they want to try and re-engage, yes. Have to be very careful about that. Wolf decimating smash very close to uh, to catching someone out there. The minions now renewed. Viral is going to come back up briefly. There's the engagement though. Fungicide is going to get taken down quite quickly. Actually, he sustains for quite a while. Fustador actually used the death mark onto Cute, which was a bit of a questionable maneuver. Viral is still alive, but incredibly low. Going to be completely forced out of the fight. Copa is going to try and do what he can, but Subtle flashed the shockwave. Copa's probably going to go down as well. Could attempt the flash over the wall. Does just about make it, but Crestus will be able to chase him down. The Queen's Wrath will be able to pick up that kill. There's the death sentence. Yep, you are more than dead, Mr. Copa. And then Crestus will play Juki, the Juke bug for the time being, and then Disappear through the teleport. Down. One more rotate would have picked up a revenge kill on Crasters. And Finally, the Scuttle had dealt damage. <laughs> if Ulrich Copa had had that Sunfire Cape for that fight, just picking it up now, that would have been a dead Crasters. Unfortunately, that is not the case for Reading Book Club, and they carry on like that. They are sticking around a little bit too long for these objectives, I feel. They did take the tower, which was nice, but they did lose quite a few members for it. They didn't lose any objectives for it this time. But we do see Kenan, or Fungicide, on this Kenan getting a huge push up on this top lane, and no one's heading up there just yet. Teleport is available, though, for Kuba. It is. But Fungicide's got it up, too, so if they want to go for a fight, then the potential counter from Kennen could come down, and if you can get a good slicing maelstrom, like, the one in the previous fight was decent, it at least forced some, somewhat of a snap reaction, but he still did go down. Granted, he tanked quite a lot for it, but he still did go down. There's the Void Rush going long way across the map as they do try and get into position for the Dragon. The Rift Scuttle was picked up by Murray. Crest is actually now miles out of position as he's going to get taken a massive amount of damage. Viral has started to hit that power spike. Fungicide's come in. Viral is going to get caught by the stun from the Slicing Maelstrom. Elbani is about to go down. Viral gets targeted by the Death Mark. It's going to fall as well. Fusador and Fungicide are going to be chased onto. Fungicide, yep, going to be in a lot of trouble. Takes a shockwave to the face. Copa did come in with a teleport as well. And this is going to be a third dragon now falling in favor of Reading Book Club. And it's Rome Fest time. Or rather, Rotate Fest time. Yeah, that was a really nice 3 for 1 there as well. They put these uh, our glorious Titanic, but so much emphasis on killing the already really far behind Viral. He's starting to come back though. He's re he's he got Bloodthirst and he's, he's got Renan's. And it's worth pointing out, Renan's, the only... That's a very unique item. Renan's, I think, is only really considered good on Callista because it just gives so much attack speed. And yeah, the additional Ren stacks you get on three people really helps with her damage. Ooh, that hook just missing from Albani. I don't think they would have gone on to Kuba anyway, as he is a oh, very no, no. tanky juggernaut right now. Um, but he is just going to clear out a couple of tunnels. The, red, uh, the blue buff, sorry, has respawned. And uh, our glorious Titanic are going to focus their attentions on defending that side of the map. Though I don't think Reading were ever going to contest. Though Viral is potentially caught out. Of the system, though the shield from Frozen Dawn, the uh, Russian from Fungicide and Frustador. Yep. Crest is just going to pick up the blue before himself. Carry on with the. Uh standard farm pattern. Subtle's just returning to base as well. Already got the static shift. Could be in a position where it wants to pick up a Bloodthirster. Yeah, that's that's going to be a Bloodthirster. Not quite got enough for the completed item, but BF Famp Scepter in the back pocket. And that'll be transformed, I think, pretty much next back if things continue the way they have been. I'm surprised to see the Bloodthirster, honestly, over the Last Whisper. Because there's a lot of armor. Of armor that That's is an insane amount of armor. On Reading's team. 
The Zonyas, the Randoins, the Sunfire, the Frozen Hearts, the Warden's Mail, and the Glacial Shroud sitting on Leona. That's a lot of armor, and I don't think Subtle is going to have enough damage this uh, until that last Whisper gets picked up. Not quite. Yeah, I mean, the only the only really susceptible one to the damage is, is Viral. And Viral has the Bloodthirster already, so is going to have more effective health going into a fight, because more lifesteal, got that shield to go through first, and of course Frozen Dawn's there to love a shield. So Cute's got the uh, shield from face of the mountain. There's the aggression coming through from Copa. There's the catch and there's the two-man shockwave. Both the carries get melted instantly. Copa's going to keep on going aggressive. Crestus is going to try and do something, but is going to effectively get burst down to Frozen Dawn. Picks up on a killing spree. There's the inner turret down, and there is the Cyan Oriana synergy. That was the wombo that they were looking for. I'm kind of surprised, I feel like there was a little bit of panic there from Subtle and Fusidor as they both use their escapes directly backwards which doesn't help against the Scion as he is just going to run straight into your face and he's standing there spamming emotes using that Roar of the Slayer, they pick up the inhibitor and that was the wombo that that team was looking for and wow, that, that was a lot of damage going down. There are things going down onto this bush behind the red bush. Red, uh, bu uh, red buff, if I can speak. They are looking to create a trap and fake the barren butts that looks like they are going to recall. Do you have so, the time pipe? Uh, I am at 29.05. I was thinking more along the lines of it's death brush time. Oh, okay, well. That works too, but they are all going back. So yeah. unfortunately not death rush time just yet. No. They could have rushed that Baron you know? They could have, yeah. I feel like they, they could have rushed that Baron. They probably should. Sometimes the sometimes the the, the flashy cool looking play is not the one you need to take. No. I mean in this but situation, then, definitely. Yeah. I guess they were scared as Fungicide Correct. still had his ultimate up, so did Albani. Like, all of the ultimates pretty much were still available for our glorious Titanic, as they just caught... Um, oh, Copa oh, is not Copa in a good is... position right now. Dodge the death sentence, but he's going to be forced to burn the unstoppable onslaught to get away from that. Actually runs headfirst into a wall, but had he had already run far enough that, uh, that our glorious Titanic couldn't catch on to him. Now got super minions streaming down this middle lane though. Viral has already split push to the degree that there's a considerable minion wave in this bottom lane as well. Smart not to stick around though because Fusador can still definitely 1v1 him at this stage. Yeah, Crasters is sniffing around as well so if uh, he had stuck around that would have been probably very detrimental to his health bar. Though we do see four men in the bot lane. We we could have a Baron rush again. If you look at there, there is only one ward behind the Baron for uh, for a glorious Titanic. They could, well, they could have uh, rushed that. But uh, looks like they're just going for a catch. A little late now, and Fungicide saw the Reading team rotating up and has uh, done a smart move and gotten the hell out. Indeed, he has. Just past the 31 minute mark, 18 to 12 currently, the score in favour of Reading Book Club. And they're closing on a 6,000 gold advantage. Six turrets to two though, that is, of course, a very nice position to be in. They've already got three dragons. So the fourth one is going to make sieging just so easy for them. The, the extra damage to minions allows them to push waves so much harder. And of course, we're nearing on that 35 minute mark where you're going to have a cannon minion every wave. Right now, actually, it's a 2v1 as Copa versus Crestus and Fungicide. They actually give up on the engagement completely. <laughs> and he is so Copa's tanky. just being. Yeah, he's so tanky and he, he's being cheeky about it. He knows that he can get away with being this. He allows his team to pick up a free fourth dragon. And now taken a lot of damage. Now he, has, he walks out of the way. way. I think he was trying to use that to escape actually but he is going to guaranteed fall for that. While his teammates however push down this bottom lane and they're going to try and go for a second inhibitor turret. The enemy team are being forced to rotate in response. Yeah 
That's um, a free dragon for Redding there. I feel like he didn't need to overstay that much and could... Then again, if he had not kind of with his ult, he would have got out just fine anyway. Although the hook oh, there's the, the catch. Byron was on a lot of trouble. A lot of damage. Still has the inhibitor turret aggro as well. Fusador's going to try and chase through, but the chilling smite coming out from Mirren will be a massive stop sign. The chase is still on. Crestus is attempting to stay on the aggressive. Mirren wanted to go for the for the glom, but was unable to do so. Still, things very much in favour of Reading Book Club. They do not yet have the Baron buff. They still could go for it. I mean, the vision in that area is quite lax for our glorious titanic. Yeah, they have no vision beyond sort of the entrance to their own jungle, that kind of line behind the two buffs, and that's really kind of detrimental for them, and um, they should be able to, well, just be able to be choked out of getting this Baron, but uh, with the inhib respawning there are no more super minions, so that's probably going to be the next target for Reddy. Realising that they're not Get it. They didn't really get much out of that inhib, apart from the dragons, so they are just going to look to restabilize, I think, and uh, pick up some more objectives. Well, the thing is, a big fight right now, the worst place for it to happen is next to an inhibitor, because that is a choke point. A massive choke point, where Copa can stand there, uh, or rather, he can charge into that. It's going to be hard to for everyone to dodge the unstoppable onslaught and if it does land then you're almost guaranteed to take a shockwave to the face as well follow that up with a solar flare or start it all off with the solar flare and the fight's pretty much already won virals gonna be jumping left right and center copa's gonna be tanking for days and when murren gets up there as well he's gonna be dealing a lot of damage while being very tanky too Indeed, and along with uh, Cutes, Leona is really starting to ramp up despite being kind of denied early. She has now finished that Frozen Heart. I'd just like to point out the amount of armor that Redding are stacking and it's not being replied. There is no, there is a Last Whisper on Zed and yeah. a Ghost Blade for the, like, the Brutalizer. That's no armor at all, as uh, Krastus gets caught out by Moe. Uh, waiting to see where the shockwave goes. It hasn't been used just yet. Solar Flare did go out. Crestus tried to uh, get caught by that. But the shockwave was Sombrero'd. He's flashed away from by Subtle, so he's not going to have flash for the next fight. The hook. Oh! Is short, but the green game is huge and everybody is going down. That was, I think, maybe a bit of a clever bait as they fell back. Elvani came forward, tried to get the death sentence to re-engage for his team, and was instantly re-engaged upon by Cute. Cute is incredibly low on health right now, but regardless of that, that is still a one fight support down. Murren and Viral going for the red buff, and, and Viral does pick it up. There's going to be the death sentence applied onto Murren. Murren is guaranteed to fall from that. There's the there's the pop. But still. Even in a prolonged sense, a one for one. Crest is going very, very forward on this one. Might end up in a bad situation. Does just decide to fall back from that. Copa's going to say, thank you. I found a little gold nugget in your tunnel, Rek'Sai. You churned it up as you decided to tunnel your way through. And you know, give it. He has no need for pretty trinkets, so he will give it to the, the shopkeeper in exchange for slightly less shiny trinkets. <laughs> and slightly more kind of belty type trinkets as he p picks up another giant spell. He doesn't care about this cannon at this point. To be fair, that's very smart because the magic damage has a hard time going through health as well. And just sitting on the Spectre's cow along with the health from the Sunfire and the other giant spell and the extra, what is it now, about the extra 630 health that he's sitting on from killing minions is more than enough to sustain him through the damage that Fungicide is putting out. That's one of the best things about Scion, unless you're against a that. very heavily AD team, or unless you're against a very heavily AP team, you only really need to get a Spectre's Cowl in terms of MR. And as we saw just a second ago, they're not doing anything to Co to Copa. I mean, he yeah. took he took a borrowed cue to the face from Crestus. I'm just, just going to say, well, 
I that's that's <laughs> cute. That's cute. See you later. So we do see a uh, our glorious Titanic setting up around this Baron as Redding are looking for this fifth dragon. I feel like as soon as they go for this dragon, our glorious Titanic may rush the Baron. they be wise to rush this Baron, um, just to prevent the pushing power that comes out from the, the super minions. But uh, it doesn't look like they're going to do that, and they're just gifting this fifth free ba uh, dragon to Redding. Yep, and Elbani's in a lot of trouble as well. He is going to get caught out by Cute and Viral. Cute in return um, is is in a bad situation. I wouldn't say massive amounts of trouble, but they fall back instantly. They don't actually want to contest this dragon. Crestus comes in, tries to go for it, but there's the fifth dragon pickup. Teleport's coming in, but it's going to be far, far too late. There's not going to be a good slicing maelstrom to come through. Viral takes down Elvani. Forcedor trying to put down enough damage, but Murren is just far too tanky. There's the double kill picked up by Murren. And that Ooh, is a complete ace. That's... clean ace. Fifth dragon stack OP. That is going to be game as well as the super minions are pushing down this mid lane. And that was a very nice team fight there. And a great Scion as well with the Olaf to run at the... At uh, Zed and Caitlyn in the back line and just stop them from doing any damage, leaving cute Frozen Dawn and Viral to pick up the uh, front line of uh, our glorious Titanic. And that is going to be game for Reddit. GG, well played. Yep, exactly 39 minute game, 24 kills to 15. As you say, Reading Book Club do take the game. 8,500 gold in the advantage. And. Well, well played all round, really. That, there were a couple of moments that maybe I would change, but that's always a matter of hindsight, because we are blessed with it. We are sat there saying, <laughs> you could have done this, you could have done that. We also have total map vision, which is probably a little bit of an advantage. We have the hacks. <laughs> the hacks are with us. Anyway, <laughs> with that game resolved, that means that uh, our glorious Titanic will be one game down. And of course, Reading Book Club, one game up. We're going to have one more game for you this evening. Ladies and gents, we'll just take a quick break while we set that up. But we'll be back with you in just a moment's time. Girl. 